Let's just figure out. God eater, Elisa, something. I'm. Ing. No, that's not English. Mm. I think that's Russian, isn't it? No, I can't read it. Elisa, uh, Il no. It's better not pronounce it than as an insult. Eh? So yeah, I know she come from Quadita, the game. I think on the PSP, I think. Or is it? Never mind. But yeah, the reason I got her is because she reminds me of what I would imagine Shiki from um, The World Ends With You was going to look like uh, if she's grown up in a few years' time. And if she decided not to use uh, a stuffed animal as a weapon and decided to pick up a giant weapon, sword, gun, shield thingy. Yeah, she just reminds me of that. So that's why I got her. She looks nice. Really, that's... Do I actually need any more reason? But yeah, a bit of a box art. Yeah. Pretty nice. So, let's get her out. Taken her out, and she looks great. Put her hat on, and that is fantastic. But yeah, she looks brilliant actually. Uh, I have to say that um, my previous experience with um, SH Figard wasn't particularly good. Um, I would say I never collect any of the riders, any of the Godzilla, or even the vaguely related, uh, related the Ultra Act. I never collect any of them, and the only other uh, edges figure I ever had are the um, pretty cure hat hat pretty cure. And as I as I recall, they are supposedly some of the first um, uh, yeah human humanized figure uh, in the edges figure lines, which turns out to be more or less like a prototype and didn't work out as well as they hope. But uh, Alisa here is quite a bit further down in the line and she is brilliant. Let me take her off. Now one thing that is actually do uh, slightly different and is only applied to certain people is that um, yeah, there is no panties in there. So don't even think about looking into it. In fact, there is no um, actual body, um, body sculpting uh, underneath the skirt. All it is is a series of ball joints to actually keep the torso and the legs together, which is good because it means that the leg articulation is pretty good. The only thing that's restricting it is the skirt, but it's a relatively soft rubber, which means that you can actually go against it without any problem. Which means that, yeah, so you can do very, very nice poses. And compared to what I had uh, before with the um, Hackett Pretty Cure line, um, she feels much better. She feels a lot more sturdy. The paint, the painting is excellent. Actually, I haven't seen a single spot of her that is actually uh, mispaint. Everything is perfect. Nothing go out of the line. Yeah, even this bit is more or less fine. Okay, a little bit of scuffing. Not that I care. But yeah, those paint line. Um, Prints are really, really nice. Uh, the ribbon on the neck is quite good. The detail on the um, on the collars, on the crest, on all of the um, rivets and pins of the metallic parts are painted perfectly. Um, the long boot is shiny and has a really, really nice um, shading on it, going from dark to a bit to pale. It's almost as if um, this is actually supposed to be a see-through boot, but really, it can't be see-through, right? The only thing, yeah, a little bit of a 
describe here is that there is a panel, there is a bit of a seam line down this bit, not down there actually, it's only that bit, a little bit of imperfection on the um, on the cut, on the spruce line, there, there, and a little bit on here as well, but uh, yeah, she looks brilliant. Her articulation is great as well. Um, once again, a uh, nice ball joint on the inside and swivel joint on the outside, and it allows it to rotate a little bit, which gives her uh, hand a bit of an in and out movement. Not to mention there's actually a uh, a pack to a swivel to a pack joint here anyway, so she can move it down there anyway. Uh, there's a swivel joint there, and it's, once again it's a pack on both sides, so she can turn her hand any direction. There's a ball joint uh, just underneath the chest, and once again there's a ball joint down there, which means that she can twist her body sideways quite a lot. Um, neck, there is one joint on the neck, um, on the head, to allow rotation, left and right, up and down. Not a lot of sideways, but I think that's because of how the joint is made. And there might be a chance that you can actually do that, to be honest. The hair is hard rubber, hard plastic, PVC. So, but um, they are model to be floating in mid-air, and it's not really hitting the body. Um, the leg is, uh, is on a ball joint on the inside, so it's go around. There is a swivel just underneath that ball joint, so her leg can rotate. Uh, a nice joint, 90 degree joint here. A reasonable angle joint, like once again, is a peg to a swivel to a peg, ball joint. So it will give you all the movement you want. Some really, really nice detail is a suspender. On this side, it's made out of really soft plastic. It's almost rubber. I think it's actually rubber or silicon. So that is actually not joined to anything. So it actually can actually fall out, which um, I have to say, it's not a big problem. As long as you put, keep the hair, um, this shoulder um, more or less pushed upward, that wouldn't be able to come off. This side, on the other hand, is designed to swivel, um, to bend downward. In fact, the the, um, the clip is molded such that it's actually pointing downward, so you can actually lift it up and over this side of the arm. It will look very odd if you do that. But yeah, it, once again, it's soft, so you will not actually get, um, uh, will not uh, interfere with anything. So it's, that is really nice as well. Uh, the hat is slightly soft, but it's not intended to be. It's about the same type of material as the hair. And it goes onto her really, really well. Yeah, really nice. So just a bit of a zoom in. Really, really nice face sculpt. The eyes are done pretty well. Yeah. Really, really nice, nicely detailed. Makes me want to buy the game. Although I don't have the console. So besides the um, serious um, monotone face, we also have a slightly smiling face and a angry shouting face. Oops. Come on. Hmm, there we go. Yeah, both of both of them are very well well sculpted. And it requires you to take the front hair piece off and to actually put the face on. Which I'm not going to do on screen because um, usually this sort of thing goes wrong. There's also some extra hair, uh, extra hand. So we have a hand for holding the weapon leaning forward sideways. We have another holding weapon but uh, more up straight. And then we have the closed fist. And also the uh, relaxed um, open hand. All of them are available on both left hand and right hand. The uh, weapon that makes the name of the game. The weapon that can actually eat God, hence the game God Eater. So this is really, really nice. A gigantic sword 
it actually has a lot of heft in it, even though it's actually just plastic. This thing feels weighty. In fact, it's so heavy that in the instruction, it tells you to be extremely careful with this. This part of it, where the handle is going to be, uh, where the handle is, is going to uh, to be the weakest part of this whole thing. So um, they recommend that it, at all time, this thing should be supported by the stand. Hence, um, Elisa has come with a stand with a double hand, uh, with a double uh, arm, one for her and one for the weapon specifically. But yeah, that is really beautiful. The sword is huge. It has a, a really beautiful metallic red on it, along with a metallic gray edge on everything. With metallic gray here, metallic thick gun metal gray here, and a slightly matte dark uh, black on the inside, which gives you some organic feel to remind you that this is not a um, a mechanical weapon. This is a living machine. This is some sort of uh, creature on the inside. One thing that is a little bit unfortunate, however, is that um, unlike in the game where this thing doubled as a sword, a machine gun, and a defending weapon, this thing stuck in the giant sword mode. It will be nice that if this is actually transformable, especially by the fact that um, this set only has one big accessory, and that is this. Beside that is just a standard hand and standard face. There's nothing else in here. So it would be really nice if this is actually transformable or at least part swapping to actually um, create some uh, variation or something at least vaguely close to what it looks like um, in the game. One thing that's also a bit disappointed, something I was expecting but it never happened, is that um, I thought that the sword would be have a hidden cut somewhere here which allows you to actually uh, simulated step into the ground like that, as in um, how the box art is actually showing it. But uh, yeah, no, it's not. That's all you get. I thought it might be a hidden joint here, or maybe this piece can be taken off with a with an alternative piece stuck in here to actually have it uh, post on the ground. And one final thing to talk about is that um, the background in the box. Usually, um, SH figure will give you a relatively interesting. Uh, a piece of graphics card uh, to use on the background for the for each of the figure. Unfortunately, in this case, it's just a piece of um, metallic silver. I was hoping that this is maybe perhaps a scene in the in the game or an explosion or some sort of ruins or something like that, or even just a symbol of the of the game. Or the symbol actually is showing in the box. This symbol. Even that on here would be on this thing would be really, really nice. Or just those checker pattern, anything would do. So yeah, this is basically it uh, for Elisa. She's really, really nice. I have to say that um, even if you're not a fan of the game like me, which I'm not a fan of the game because I never play the game. I think she's beautiful. She's actually amazing to look at, even as a display piece just for the sake of showing people how badass a action figure of a female character can be. I mean, you cannot argue with this sword. Yeah, she's done beautifully. She looks great. She looks menacing with the sword next to her. And I would definitely recommend her. So this is basically it for me. Join me next time for another review.